Hey, Pew Pew family, this is Sean, and I brought Johnny Fantastic out to Lone Oak, Arkansas to tour the Remington factory. Come on inside, let's check it out. we're taking a behind-the-scenes look at one of the oldest American names in firearms, Remington. Recently, the Pew Pew crew were invited to tour their amazing manufacturing facility. This How It's Made Peak is cool in its own right, but this is also a comeback story. How Big Green got its groove back. You may recall Remington filed for bankruptcy in 2018, then quickly re-emerged after restructuring. The 200-year-old firearms giant filed once again in 2020, and a bankruptcy court parted and sold the company. The firearms component were bought by Roundhill Group LLC and rebranded as Rem Arms. The ammunition side of things was purchased by Vista Outdoors. And here in the wooded plains outside Lone Oak, Arkansas, that's where our tale begins. We met a lot of great folks as we toured the facility, but were reminded that it's still a working factory. I tucked my hair under my hat, kept my hands to myself, and we headed into 2A equivalent of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. The Remington grounds sprawled across 1,200 acres and contained multiple sites for building, testing, and even enjoying their products. Led by our guide, Joel, we started in a building called Eli, which was named for Eliphalet Remington, who founded the company in 1816. This awesome building was currently assigned to mass-producing 9mm, and the machines were whirring away as we toured. We saw machines that handled giant coils of brass weighing 4,000 pounds. The material was stretched, pressed, and snipped into shell casings. Then different parts of the process added the actual bullet and primer on either end. At a bullet maker, we spoke with Adam, the plant manager who was dealing with the mechanical issue. The giant clutch of the machine was broken down and only made in Canada. The text they needed to work with only spoke French, which was a graphic example of some of the challenges faced when making ammunition. Joel explained how coming under Vista brand had improved things. Working with sister agencies like Federal, the various ammo manufacturers have benefited from cross-pollination, seeing how they can do things better or more efficiently. Vista inherited some major issues when they took over, but their efforts are paying dividends. Promptly riding the ship, they worked on facility issues and brought bankruptcy furloughed employees back on in time for Christmas so they'd have benefits. Newly helmed, Remington continued in that trend, hiring 20 people a week, and building up to three shifts in some areas to run the production 24-7 in an effort to match demand. A month before our visit, Remington shipped out more ammunition than they had in the past five years combined. Joel estimated their output in the billions of rounds per year. And the company is still growing. Eli has been slated for a Skunk Works edition, a section dedicated strictly to research and development. Joel hinted at some exciting projects. We toured the area where the shotgun shells were made, and this was fascinating. Seeing the long tubes of plastic heated, stretched, then cooled in tanks of water and snipped to length before being capped was amazing. I'd never really given much thought to how these might have been produced. Above all, the shot tower was a highlight. Some 12 stories up, a giant furnace exists strictly to melt lead into molten metal. This is then poured out through filters that form the basic size of the shot. As it drops, it cools and is collected at the bottom. We didn't see this running live because of the heat and risk, but there was plenty of evidence of it running everywhere we looked. Carts, hoppers, and bins of ammo were everywhere. 
We checked out Rimfire and I was impressed with the amount that was steadily being pumped out. As I think about it, even during the heightened demand, I never saw a lack of 22 or shotgun shells on the shelves in stores. This process, like the rest, was really cool. Primers are a whole different situation since they are inclusive to the case. One of the greatest parts was just seeing enormous amounts of 22 and giant hoppers that probably weighed hundreds of pounds. At several points during the trip, I found myself wondering how long it would take me to shoot various piles of ammo I encountered. One of the most interesting stops was down in the underground testing facility where workers indiscriminately test batches of ammo by actually pulling a sample off the assembly line, loading it into a test chamber, and firing it. Jimmy explained how his section tests for function, pressure, velocity, and accuracy of everything Remington makes. Just as important, they test for real-world scenarios, freezing and heating ammunition before firing it to simulate scenarios actual shooters might face. Most noteworthy was the armory at Jimmy's fingertips, just about one of everything you could imagine. With the tour of the facility complete, we headed out to a couple of different ranges where we shot centerfire and rifle out to 200 yards, followed by 9mm through blocks. We also shot rimfire rifle and pistol, sampling a good deal of the quality products Remington offers. Finally, we moved on to a sporting clays course. I had shot skeet and trap a little, but never anything this cool. The course was as fun as it was humbling and greatly demonstrated an area where I need a lot of practice. By the end of the trip, I was really impressed with how far Big Green has come. In 2020, the company was sold in bankruptcy. A few months later, it was plain to see the ammo giant had not only recovered, it's increasing production. Top that off with an intense quality control program and even investing in the future with research and development for new products. In many ways, Remington benefited from its separation from the firearms manufacturer of the same name. Now they have their own budget, own direction, and vision. Coupled with the proven know-how of Vista Outdoors, this American icon is working toward a brighter future. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for following along in our adventure. Johnny Fantastic and I came out all the way to Lone Oak, Arkansas and toured the Remington factory out here where they are making ammo like mad. We had a blast and really got a nice peek behind the scenes of just how dedicated the folks are at Remington, how hard they work trying to get ammo out to the consumers out there that want to go shooting. So thank you again to Remington for having us out. We appreciate the opportunity and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.